Good afternoon, traders. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. This is uh, your weekly outlook for the week starting with October 22nd, uh, 2018. It is 3.35 p.m. Eastern Time right now, and it's October 21st. It is Sunday. Uh, we're going to begin with Russell, Russell 2000 Index Futures. Last week's trading, we found resistance into the 50 SMA and into the prior resistance that we have established back in June, uh, back in January and through March. The price sliced through uh, this confluence zone, landing into this cluster, pretty, uh, pretty rangy cluster right here. So we do have a lot of bottoming tails and we do have a lot of price fluctuation that we've had back in February all the way through April. And April was actually the turnaround month where we started to progress higher. But right now we're back into those uh, April levels once again and we're testing and retesting. Uh, I think that moving forward for this uh, for this week, the price needs to stabilize into the 1530. If the price is not going to stabilize in the 1530 level, any breach of this price action may enter into a very choppy range to 1500. Uh, 1480 and even lower testing into the 1450 and this would be the start of a pretty steep retracement and by the way this is the weekly chart right here that we're reviewing uh, going to the daily charts you can see that we had a move up and then a pullback back uh, and a pullback that sold off from 1600 back to into uh, back into the 1550 now what we have here is a very very wide range definitely for swing traders really wild to trade with uh, such huge stops but the way the pattern is setting up right now we're having selling pressure from the 200 sma uh, we're almost crossing the 20 with the 200 sma here and we're trading below minor resistance which is at 1630 zone the way the price is setting up right now if um then the overnight trading or sometimes uh next week we're gonna breach the 1530 level this is going to be a bear flag and i think that the price may want to retest very quickly the 15 uh the 1500 and even going back down into the 1450. so very bearish uh pot pattern uh from russell let's continue with something that had a little bit more substance to it and was trying to hold and we're going to go back to the weeklies uh weekly chart still ascending uh in the imini &E dow industrial average futures uh and we can see that pretty much since this uh, volatile move that uh, initiated in february and found support um in Fe on february uh, the 5th uh, we have managed to create higher lows in this uh, in this region and we can see that the 50 SMA has whole has held and not only that but it looks pretty much like uh, like a trend line so uh, if we would draw a trend line this is exactly support right here from where we have rotated last week last week doji so it's not as bearish as russell russell has a really bearish candle for last week and then this is going to be very tricky to trade into next week because it's very close to breaching that support level that if sliced we can set up a real bear flag formation that can push us lower not the same case with the imini &E dow the imini &E dow right now sitting on support ended the week with a slightly higher uh, low uh not tapping quite onto the 50 sma at the 24.990 so uh, being this doji candle it just shows us a lot of indecision at this price range i've already set an alert for 25.845 uh, and this will be if the price is going to progress a little bit higher into next week this is the area that if triggered this is the area where we're going to have another higher uh, uh, another lower high into this pivot and with a progression higher uh and if we trade above 845 we can see again highs back into the 26600 and even more going for the fourth quarter of the year uh so we do have a lot of room for a continuation higher at this point in time and again this is sunday 
October 21st. Price action is extremely, extremely neutral uh, for the open. You can see that even going to the daily chart, going a little bit into a micro uh, level, um, daily chart still very small candle within a bear candle but at the same time take a look at the confusion that we have here we have solid support at the 25 120 to 150 we have rotated up from that point on and we're coming back down now i think the most important part is for the price to move in a constructive way to the 25 725 and i'm going to put a quick alert into this area because if throughout the overnight trading or into tomorrow we're going to move towards this direction off of this high we may have room for a possible continuation higher into the 850 and even more uh, i just want to show you very quickly on this chart that uh, basically what has happened and this is the hourly chart basically what has happened since we have the big volatile move that came in once again that is again just zooming out a risk level uh it has been meandering and then it popped a little higher and then back again i mean take a look at this price action into friday although we're trading in really hefty wide ranges from 25 to 10 all the way into this prior high of 25 720 huge wide range but at the same time it doesn't give us for and it doesn't give day traders uh, much information uh, in regards to directional bias unless we break above these two pivotal zones the 525 and the 845 we're and uh, the more we meander within this support level and the 25 200 and these highs right here we're not going to have any kind of confirmation of a price progression higher or even lower we do have a descending 200 SMA on the one hour chart, and this is pointing towards more selling pressure that may come underway. But at the same time, you can see that we have tried very, very hard on Friday to sustain the 335 level, which is the new current intraday support level for the m and &E Dow. So moving forward, we're gonna be very, very cautious without a directional bias, without a clear directional bias in any of the indices. We're going to zoom out again to the weekly chart and we're going to review the m and SMP. The m and SMP finished a week with a doji, tapped onto the 50 SMA, and again, we're going to be bullish through next week if we tap over the 2825. Now let's zoom in and let's take a look at the daily charts. The daily charts, the way the configuration is, we're tapping again onto the 200 moving average now if we're not going to be holding the lows of 2750 uh then we're going to enter this bear flat pattern and any if we're going to get the price pressure pr selling price pressure into the 2750 we're going to go back and revisit the 2700 and even lower so again we're going to have to wait for more information to develop in, in the overnight trading and into on into monday uh, so we can have a clear directional buy. So at this point, the daily chart points lower uh, because of this bear flag formation. However, strong support into the 2750, 2770, as long as we're holding these levels right here. And if we trade again over 2800 in the overnight or into Monday, Monday's trading, uh, we're obviously going to move a little bit higher, going back into a high of 28, uh, 2820. So I'm going to put an alert here, just above, just to give us a heads up on Monday. All right, let's review. Uh, let's review Nasdaq, and let's zoom out again to the weekly charts. Nasdaq has found support again at 7,000 level, from which we have rotated again. So. NASDAQ still holding a 50 SMA, pretty much a strong, uh, strong trend line at this point because you could see how uh, we can have our directional bias as long as the price is going to remain above 7,000. We're going to look for pullback buys at this point. Uh, what is really of concern is the fact that all throughout last week we have not managed to break above this minor support level and also congestion zone into the 
uh, 70, uh, 73, 70 zone. So if we break above the 73, 70 zone, in fact, the 73, 75, we may have room for a correction for, for a move back up into these highs of 77, uh, 77 hundreds and, and 77 28, which is the all time high for NASDAQ that was set on October 1st. So not that far, uh, not that far ago. So moving into, uh, we're going to zoom out a little bit now to the daily chart. You can see that on Friday, we did have some selling pressure that came in towards the end of the day or towards the end of the session. And we have not managed to hold above 7,200. 7,200 was a very important confluence zone for the price to hold. So you can see that right now we're about 100 points below that area. Once again, very, very wide swings. Uh, I would love to initiate some swing trades. However, the risk is really, really increased uh, for us to take uh, action and to take part uh, into, uh, into let's say, a buying of the dip opportunity. And I think that we hear, uh, we talked about it in the trading room, although the stop was uh, very, very well. We did have a couple of traders that initiated in this trade and banked really great profits on this move to the upside. But right now the price got rejected. We had a daily sell, uh, 72.15, it rotated back down, back into this uh, 200 SMA here. So we're gonna have to wait. So far, bear flag, uh, very neutral weekly chart, um, daily chart, bear flag. And again, I'm gonna zoom in uh, on the out one hour chart to show you how um, the NASDAQ 100 had quite a bearish uh, bearish pattern for uh, for the end of the trading session, especially for the New York trading session. So we moved up a little bit. We held support right here. Now we have a double bottom. I think the most important of uh, uh, the important, most important element for the overnight trading is for the price to roll back up uh, and uh, break the 7150 and start uh, doing a constructive work and advancing towards the 7200. So once again, we do have multiple support levels uh, at the 7100. Uh, keep in mind that we have about a 50 point fluctuation uh, within this area. So the support is literally like, like a rubber band, like sort of like a slingshot. So I don't know if it wants to pull back into the 7060 where I have my cursor and then uh, go through the 7150 and higher. Uh, but definitely a lot of patience needs to be applied uh, for uh, the this upcoming week. So once again, we do have a lot of earnings that are being scheduled uh, this week. It's going to be a very, very active week. Um, I have a few more, uh, few more charts that I want to review. The first chart is going to be gold. Uh, gold has been consolidating uh, quite bullishly on Friday. Uh, and I'm going to start with the hourly chart. We already have a signal, the 12, uh, 1236. Uh, this is a breakout signal. Uh, this is a very nice uh, breakout, possible breakout over 1236. This is a bull flag uh, based on an hour. Also, the four hour chart looks uh, very, very nice, a little bit more condensed. Uh, we do have support at the 1219. So that would be the risk for this trade. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you very quickly. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, we do have a really nice tradable void if we break above the 1236. We may progress higher into the 1250, the 1260, uh, 65, and then all the way into the 70s. So this is a really nice formation that we're seeing right here. Really nice pull. Uh, pulled back by that we have on the weekly chart. But again, the line in the sand is going to be at the 1236 because this level can be seen as both rejection level or breakout continuation. So if we're going to trade above 1236, then we're going to get a breakout continuation for higher uh, using the risk that I've mentioned. And uh, if we decide to rotate here and if we go back down and test the 1219, so I'm going to mark this area as well, uh, we may have another correction that may take the price back into uh, the 1200 zone right here and even back to revisit the prior lows into 1180. 
Uh, let's move on and uh, let's uh, review oil. And this is uh, light, sweet, crude oil. Uh, crude oil is back into the weekly chart, suggests that pullback. We may not, uh, we may have not bottomed yet from from this two candle pullback, two week pullback right here. Uh, 68, uh, 6860 is the new support level. You can see that we have a confluence zone here. So there's gonna be a decision this week whether we're gonna hold that area, move higher, or we're gonna pull back uh, pull back even more. If we pull back more, we still have room into the uh, 6750 zone. And I'm going to move to the daily chart. And uh, we're trading a new contract. Uh, we started trading a new contract last Thursday, uh, two trading days already uh, into the new contract. Um, over $70, we're going to be looking for a continuation higher back into the 71, uh, 71 30s and back into the 72, uh, 72 dollars. If the price is going to roll back into the lows, into the 68.50, expect a pullback back into the $68 and probably a revisit into the 67 30s, right into this, uh, right into this uh, 200 SMA and probably a, a small punch through this line before a reversal occurs. Now, I want to show you very quickly back in August, it, this was August 17 here, that we had a really nice rotation off of this multiple bottoms here. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that if we move into the 67 zone, the 67 zone is going to be a buyable zone. So 67 is going to uh, still maintain the uptrend for throughout this year uh, and may represent a really good buying opportunity uh, for us. So $67, uh, in fact, I'm going to put an alert right here uh, because $67 is going to be seen as a super hot confluence zone uh, for a rotation back to the upside. So I'm going to put an alert right here below 67.23. So it gives me a heads up ahead of time, ahead of revisiting this these prior lows. All right, so this was uh, this was oil. Uh, let's take a quick look at RBOB, and this is the gasoline futures, and we're gonna expand to the weekly chart to review. Uh, over $2, and if we trade over $2 this week, this is going to be a swing buy. And I'm going to set a quick alert here to give us the okay ahead of time before hitting that $2. Uh, and actually, the buy can be a little bit below uh, the $2. And can, the buy can actually be at 1.9932, so a little bit ahead of that 97 signal. So I'm definitely going to be watching it. Remember that the first reaction may be to the upside, and then we may get a pullback back into the 97. I will alert in the room in case we're going to get a swing trade off um, uh, off early in the week or even later in the week. So far, very neutral bar. Uh, it's not ready for a definite move to the upside or the downside just yet. We do have support at 1.88. If we break this support level from last week, then we may get a further continuation lower back into the 177 or 175. I really like it for uh, uh, for a continuation higher, so I would like to see it uh, break that two dollars. It's also a really good, uh, really good support level there that can if if the price is gonna punch through it, it's gonna look uh, really really good for us. Uh, let's take a look at heating oil and uh, here we go heating oil. Uh, heating oil is a little stronger than uh, than any of the energy uh, energy charts that I have reviewed, and uh, so far we had a tap into a confluence zone at the two twenty seven five. Uh, if we get uh, if we get this really nice rotation off, uh, and the high is uh, thirty five sixty two, so thirty five sixty three would be the trigger. Thirty five sixty three. Let's just punch it in right here. This would be the trigger for higher, okay, for higher. Now, keep in mind, if the price is going to move and if you like the price pattern, I'm going to give you the risk. So you have to apply a risk uh, below this low right here. So your risk will be 2.2835. Uh, um, if we should trigger, I know a lot of you guys are trading the overnight markets and you take into consideration there 
there may not be an official call on it if this should develop in the overnight trading session. So make sure that you place your alerts and if you're interested in trading this chart, there's not gonna be an additional alert if this should happen in the overnight trading. Uh, definitely uh, target is going to be into the 245 and 250 for heating oil. Let's take a look at natural gas. Uh, natural gas and we're getting ready for a roll in natural gas and also in heating oil and RBOB uh, and uh, we're gonna roll very very soon uh, so right now I'm gonna erase these alerts that I had here okay here we go all right so right now if we're gonna trade below and this is uh, we, we pretty much had a doji bar right here so 315 is going to be the line in the sand if the price is gonna come through 315 I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna put it at 15 okay here we go five okay doesn't want to take the typing for some reason let me just try it again all right here we go all right sometimes it doesn't want to go all right so if we trade below uh, below 315 uh, we may have a pullback that may take the price lower into the 306. Some of you guys may want to trade the overnight trading session or uh, sometimes these moves happen in the overnight trading session, especially when we're looking at commodities. Um, expect a pullback into the 306 and into the $3, this is going to be a buy zone. Okay, this, this is going to be a buy zone again. And we're going to be looking at it again. So I'm going to place my alert right here. Okay, so $3 a buy zone and a uh, sell zone is going to be below three, uh, 315 and the risk, you would have to place a risk into the 3.40. Uh, uh, and this was natural gas. Uh, let's take a quick look at bonds, uh, ZB. Uh, bonds have been uh, in a very bearish pattern for a very, very long time. I'm gonna start with the monthly chart so you can have uh, more information uh, um, about price more price information all right so we have reached a zone of support at the 136 it's also psychological and uh, the more we hold this support level on the monthly chart uh, the more we look uh, uh, for a progression higher so uh, I don't see bonds bouncing anytime soon uh, but if they do, if they trade over 140, this is going to be the buy signal. So buy signal is going to be over 140. Uh, I'm going to give you some numbers for those of you that want to take look at a closer time frame, such as the weekly chart. So I'm going to go, uh, we're going to progress very, very slowly. Uh, if you're interested in bonds, the trigger, just uh, pin this, uh, 138.32. 138 yeah 138 let's put an alert here it has to trade over 39 okay so it has to trade over 39 but if it trades over 139 you may have room for higher back into it's not going to be easy it's going to be 39 13 and for those of you that are intraday trading, trading the overnight, or trading very early before the trading room starts, uh, bonds have the tendency to move really well between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. So if you're looking at bonds, uh, once again, over 139, look for targets into the 139.18 and 140. And if it trades over 140, then we may have that push a little bit higher. So 139, I'm even gonna look on the daily chart very quickly uh daily chart uh you know what this is very interesting here this may be a daily rotation the high is 138 let's put on a quick alert here 138.14 okay so pay attention to these levels 139.14 if you if we break above 139.14 we're going to go to 138.20 Okay, 27. That's going to be the next target. The risk here is going to be 137.15. Okay, so this is the risk that you're going to need to apply and then look for a continuation higher back into the 139 and possibly back into the 140s, like I mentioned before. Okay, now if you're looking at, and this is the 30 year bond, if you're looking, oops, 
here we go. If you want to look on the 10 year bond, uh, let's just zoom out again to the monthly chart. Again, the monthly chart is going to have a trigger over 118.28 uh, for higher, for higher. Like I said, they're still standing on some support. They're sitting on some support. In tomorrow's trading, if you prefer uh, the 10 year bond and if you're looking at the 10 year bond i know they have really good margin uh and some of you may look because of your account size 118.14 is going to be the line in the sand if we trade above uh in fact you can even cheat a bit and if it trades over 118.10 118.10 you may have a really nice trade all the way into the 118 zone, 118.29, okay, 118.29, and that's a really, I would say, pretty good tradable void, pretty good tradable void. All right, one more chart, and this is silver. Okay, here we go, and I'm going to zoom out a bit to the weekly charts. Uh, first off, we have a double bottom in silver. Silver, kind of interesting right here, bottomed out at 13.9, and it had a high last week, a very interesting high of 14,755. Uh, now, and this was the week before last week. Now, last week, we held this low. We held the low of 14,255, and not only that, but we managed to trade above this prior high. You can see the baby candle right here. Oh, this is the monthly chart, I'm sorry. So prior month, and this month we have triggered higher. So we haven't had a, a higher trigger in silver in a very, very long time. I'm not really sure that it is ready for a continuation higher. Uh, it has been, uh, this the, through 2018 and 2017 it has been very very choppy and it hasn't moved much uh but i think that it may be getting ready for uh for a rotation a little bit higher so we're gonna keep an eye on silver uh let's go to the monthly chart monthly chart we can see that we have already set up a bottom we're already moving a little bit higher here we pull back again into uh, uh the week before last week and then last week we pretty much finished at this jo doji here into the 15 dollars i think that if we manage and uh, the fact that we have uh, uh we have pushed into this area we're gonna watch silver for those of you that like to trade metals on a, a daily base watch it over this high of 1488 the trigger is 1489 so i'm gonna get, create a quick alert leave it at 88 and a half that's going to give us a heads up into the 89 because if we get this we may even look for a day trade into silver that may progress higher into the 15 dollars and 15 20 and even higher than that so i really like the way uh the, the way it is shaping up all right so this was a little bit longer market overview i hope you enjoyed it uh remember to subscribe if you like what you're hearing and if you uh think that you thank you so much for tuning in if you like what you're here thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and I'll see you next week. Good luck.